Adrian, you're a hard act to follow. Kiorana, Kiora, Maloni, Maloilele, Bula, Namaste. Thank you very much to the Health Promotion Forum for um, asking me along to speak today. It was a really interesting opportunity to think hard about what direction health promotion should be going into. Uh, and um, I've, it's been a really interesting journey, that's not just the last one. Now, I need a clicker, or else I may need to come down here. Well, I could be your lovely assistant. Oh, you could be. I, I have to see what's on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to those of you at the back that are challenged by about the last six inches, oh, no, but that's as high as it gets at the moment. Oh, okay. But if I go do this, is it all right? Yeah. Are you going to be my lovely assistant? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I thought the Governor's general address was an extremely interesting one and um, talked about the importance of health promotion, the importance of willing partners and the challenges that we all face together. So mine is a story of willing partners too and how to create those partnerships. Uh, and I'm going, to be, um, I'm going to be talking about partnerships particularly between researchers in the community but how researchers and community organisations such as the one that you work with can then link through to different governments. Uh, next one, thanks, Adrian. Okay, so I'm going to do a stock take of what the, um, the big problems that face us at the moment. I'm going to be looking at issues about the economic recession very briefly, about the ongoing problems about inequalities, uh, and looking particularly about climate change, that um, extremely serious problem that we're going to be faced with in our lifetime and our children and our mokopuna. Uh, and then I'm going to be looking um, particularly at our research, um, the housing and health research program that we've been doing for about a decade now and the lessons that we've learned from that. And then conclude by saying um, one of the highlighting that I think one of the most important issues it's a question of finding co-benefits, of advantages for a number of people if they're going to actually all work together. Thanks. Yes. Okay, so, um, can you see that? Yeah. So, the first one I'm going to be talking about is inequalities. Now, we know a lot about health inequalities, and um, some of the work in our department shows that there are inequalities not just in health, but in the things that determine, determine those inequalities. And I think it's really important that these, these are not inevitable. It doesn't have to be like that. Income, income inequality can increase. That is the difference between the rich and the poor. The gap can increase, but it can also shrink again. Uh, life expectancy, the difference between um, the child born into a family with low education and a family with high education, a uh, child born into a, a Māori whānau and to a Pākehā family, that can increase or decrease. And policies can make them better or worse, and we can make a difference. These are not inevitable. I'm going to show you just too quickly two graphs to show this. Thanks. Now, this is the income inequality, it's called the Gini coefficient, and you can see here, um, this is after housing costs in the blue, and this is before housing costs, and this up here, we're getting very high, this is about the level of the United States, down here, we're about the level of the Scandinavian countries, and you can see in the 1980s, we had quite low inequalities, then in the period of the 1990s, um, they increased very dramatically. And then they're starting to come down again, um, stabilizing and coming down again, and actually decreased further in 2008. So the gap between rich and poor doesn't stay exactly the same. It can shrink, it can grow wider, and it can um, narrow again. Oh, thanks, that's great. Uh, so in, in, in the period when we were introducing uh, market rents to state housing in periods of high unemployment here, you can see the gap between rich and poor got um, very dramatic. When we try and address those in the 2000, it starts to come down again. So we can make a difference. <coughs> and the same with life expectancy. In the top here you have Pākehā, men and women, and then you have Māori down below. And you can see in the period of the first welfare state, 
Actually, the, the gap between Māori and Pākehā really shrank and then um, has continued and then um, here is still our life expectancy is increasing, it's going up the t all the time here uh, and it's remained fairly stable here and actually in the period between 2002 and 2008, which I don't have a graph of but it's starting, we think that it's coming, um, converging again. So depending on the policies of the government at national and local level, it does make a real difference. Here, rapid increase in the life expectancy of Māori, uh, and then um, a bit differences again here. Thanks. So, um, the important thing, although you hear a lot about um, the economy being the most important thing, and we have to put the economy first, uh, and then not... <coughs> Uh, not worry about other things. Actually, both economic growth and recession don't have to have an effect on health, depending on what policies the government has. And it's very important that we work to, at a local government level and a national government <coughs> level, to say we've got to have policies, like act, active labour market policies, that will help to reduce inequalities, not make them larger. Now, this is particularly important because we've got a major problem with human-induced climate change. And the world is heating. We absolutely know this now. Um, all the scientists of the world have got together in this intergovernmental plan on, um, panel on climate change. And the only question is whether it's two degrees warming or five degrees warming over this century. And this makes a huge difference. We know we're already committed um, probably to one degree, one meter of warming. Uh, if the climate actually increases by five degrees centigrade, uh, we've got 12 meters of sea level rise. And if you think where we're placed here, probably less than a meter above sea level, you can start to see the consequences um, for cities, uh, even like Wellington. And we need to urgently work together at a community level. Uh, at a government level um, to promote health by ensuring that the parts per million of carbon don't go above 350. We're already actually at about 360, we've got to bring it down. This is a very, very urgent problem. Uh, it's got lags like smoking. You're not going to die tomorrow from smoking if you take a cigarette today, but it accumulates and the problem gets worse and worse the more cigarettes are smoked. The more and more carbon we put into the atmosphere, the worse the problem is going to be. Thanks. Uh, now, one of the things that we noted in our work, and I'm going to come on and talk about our housing work, that there are various things that you can do to reduce carbon. And actually the most cost-effective thing down here, the thing that actually pays you to do it, is improving things with housing. Um, putting in insulation improvements of all the things you can do uh, to mitigate carbon, to put less carbon in the air, it's insulation. Thanks. Uh, and here you can see um, some of the effects of climate change. This is a, what's called a moulin. Uh, you can see the water starts melting. These are people here. And this water gushes down. This is in Greenland. Gushes down in the centre of the ice flow and then starts to lubricate the ice underneath the Greenland ice shield. And you can see how huge these big waterfalls are. And this is now happening in Antarctica. And of course the effect, this is Tuvalu, uh, raises the sea level. And then when you get storms coming through that are more intense, uh, they wash right over the island. And we think that Kiribati is going to have to be, um, uh, people are going to have to live Kiribati by 2020. And there are 100,000 people in Kiribati uh, with... Um, where the number of health problems, infectious health problems. So the resettlement of extended families is something that's very important to think ahead about. And in fact, in our group, we're looking at um, what are the health needs and the housing needs of people who are going to be, um, need to be resettled from some of these islands. Thanks. <coughs> 